Yep. It's a hard life for little wiener dogs. Frida Reba Darcy and one Patricia O'Connor here. And we are enjoying another super bald cypress Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. A uh, quick look. Those are our little uh, cherry tree cuttings. Uh, propadori? No, uh, prop lifted. Yeah. Um, we're just looking at them to see how they're doing. They're still budding out. They would do that whether or not they were rooted or whether or not they would do that to some extent because that was just about what they were about to do when I clipped them and they probably have enough energy in in the wood that I got there that they could do that until they dry out and quit. Hopefully my keeping that moist and happy will get them to root. I didn't use anything uh, because I didn't have anything. Things that uh, I could be talking about would include uh, rooting hormone, um, honey is also uh, been used in place of rooting hormone before. Um, some people say water willow actually can help as a rooting hormone. I don't know how that is and I don't know whether or not that's just a lifestyle or not. But anyway, that was a quick look at those guys. And while we're looking at things that, that aren't currently happening, uh, our little cones, these are our Dawn Redwood, not our Dawn Redwood. These are our coastal redwood cones. They're sitting in their, their flat uh with with the uh, staying wet and in the sunshine hoping that at some point they will uh bust out a few sprouts our little our our little uh aguri uh collected oak tree seems to be doing pretty good our uh bougainvillea seems to be doing pretty good our other little bug and video that we uh, actually didn't give a chance in hell to is proving that we didn't. Uh, our little ponds are doing good. I know you doesn't sound. I know this doesn't sound like it, but this is actually going to be a, um, a cypress show today. Um, I brought this in for a few hours after the show yesterday because every time I look at it, I see more weeds, and I like de and I will like get all the weeds out of it until there are none and then turn right around like an hour later and there's weeds and i'm like did you just not see them or are they really or are they really can they really be that fat anyway i don't know i don't have an answer to that but um here was something else bizarre uh this was at its beginning a forest of 19 kodaheim maples to which i ordered 20 so i had one standing by one died I replaced it. One more died, that would still put us at 18. So yesterday, I probably counted those trees a dozen times. Um, why would I count the trees a dozen times? Well, because every time I counted them, I got 19 or 20. Uh, I started off with 19 and lost, started off with 20, lost two. So why do I have 19 or 20 anyway? I'll do one little quick frame here. If you want to freeze that and play count the trees, uh, I bet you come up with either 19 or 20, just like I did. And no, there's not any of them that are double. Although there is a little tree right down there that counts. That might have been that might have been close to another tree when I unraveled them. In other words, that might have actually been two trees that I counted as one whenever I got them. Uh, maybe that would account for one, but I still don't quite understand how I could lose how I could lose two trees and still have uh, that many trees. Anyway, things about numbers. Has a little quick look at our oak. Its canopy looks a little coke bottle shaped right now, but it's early yet. All of this stuff is going to do all of those great things. I probably won't wire a lot of that. I'll probably do mostly clip and grow uh you know what i'm not going to make any rules if i need to clip and grow part of that we'll clip and grow part of it if we need if we see a, uh, a branch that needs to uh fill in a bare spot then if a little wire will help that we will do that whatever 
whatever we need to do. I'm not making any hard, fast rules when it comes to my style as wiring trees or, or doing clip and grow. I think clip and grow is often uh, a really cool way to go. I have seen some trees that um, were clip and grow that were just absolutely beautiful. But, um, and I've heard other people say that they think that, that clip and grow trees are more, uh, I don't know, accurate or, or more believable. I don't know that I, I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that. I have seen clip and grow trees that were so segmented um, that they looked artificial, like, you know, that their vibration was just so mesmerizingly perfect. And the trees were really beautiful, but I don't know if they necessarily look realistic. You don't ever see perfection like, anyway, I know that you probably can't visualize what I'm talking about. But anything you could say about wire trees, you can probably also say about clip and grow trees. The main thing is, and this kind of makes sense to me, as you can see, I've got a little bit of wire on my cypresses. I've got a ton of wire on my um, on my cork fork oak, even though I said I wasn't gonna do that on that. I was gonna try to do that more clip and grow. Well, I fell off that bandwagon early, and then I wired it badly, and then, uh, and now I'm finally, this will be the tree that I have finally learned how to do a little bit of wiring on. And no, I'm not talking about I learned how to do it as in uh, the wire on there enhances the look of the tree and it's all just so blah, blah, beautiful or whatever. No, far from it. It's kind of an eyesore, uh, a lot of that. But it is working. I don't have anything on there that's not doing what I need it to do right now, which is putting some motion in some branches. And... Um, what I heard somebody say is that it took them years to learn to correctly wire a tree. And once they had learned to properly wire a tree, they had also learned why many times they didn't need to. But it was kind of like a process. And I don't want the reason that I don't wire my trees to be the part where I just sucked at it and said, yeah, I suck at this and put the wire down. Um, I think that's a reason to improve. And then uh, when you have that in your arsenal, then you also uh, won't be necessarily wiring things just to say that you've done it, nor will you be, uh, nor, will, nor will I necessarily be uh, all clip and grow. So that's probably a little bit but let's have a seat with the cypress trees and um do a little do a little look see how they're doing the lights especially good on these trunks right now i'm starting to see the new growth coming back in places where i've clipped it back before look at how many there's like there's like probably three four five six Seven, eight, nine little shoots right there on that one knot. Uh, we'll, uh, I don't know, I'll have to think about that. We don't want that stuff just to come out in huge clusters like that. I'll probably cut that down to one at some point, but I'll let them, I'll let them all decide which one's going to be that one for a minute before we do anything. Um, but look at all the uh, little shoots on all this stuff. I was watching some other uh, bonsai uh, videos this morning from uh, people who were also doing bald cypress and one one gentleman who had had, uh, he was from England and those guys, they are really on their game and he was sound like he was very, very bonsai knowledgeable, but you know, I don't think they get as many or he can, they get their hands on as many of the cypress trees as we have available to us here in the States. But he was uh, talking about one thing that they definitely do. You can put wire on one of these branches and bend it down. And then when you take the wire up, they do sort of have a little bit of memory to them to where they will go back to their original shape really quick. That's kind of one reason 
why you might want to tend to leave some wire on a little long. But uh, to that end, I was going to do something. I know that when push comes to shove, I'm going to pick out a couple of these shoots on here that are vibricating out that I, I will pick out a couple of them that I, uh, I want to be uh, the secondary. And then we're going to give that guy a clip part of this wherever we've decided those two guys are going to be the uh, our next part of the secondary. So the reason I put such drastic motions in some of this stuff going in was so that almost no matter where I cut it, I would at least have a little motion in it. Um, so that was kind of the idea behind that. And the idea furthermore is if that's going to say I were to cut that down to here and then a shoot comes out there a shoot comes out there I cut that off those two come out and do two and do two so by the time we get out here a little bit either one the weight of that is starting to bring the branches down to a workable level or two it's going to have this kind of a rainbow thing now <laughs> I kind of think I know uh, that I probably wouldn't be as happy with what I'm calling the rainbow thing. But what I don't want to do right now is I don't want to repair, I don't want to do my fix for having these be a little too straight right now without there being weight. At some point, at some point, this is going to branch off. Those are going to branch off. Those are going to branch off. And as we get out here, the weight of that should naturally bring it down. And whenever we get to what we think is our working load, you know, whenever we go, yeah, that's probably about an appropriate length, blah, blah. Here's what I will do. And it's something that I picked up on this morning. It was something that I've learned on other on other trees, but it's it's probably the easiest way around it. Once we've got like the foliage coming out, to whatever length we think is good and it's bifurcated out to some secondary and some tertiary uh, if that's not hanging down like we want it or if it looks like it's rainbowed and we don't like that look it might be that it, when we look at it we might actually go yeah it's kind of rainbow but i don't know that i dislike anyway we'll make our judgment on that and if we don't like it the way around that would be to put a small cut a wedge cut in here in the bottom and then pull and then pull them down slightly you can still see how rubbery that is. I've got some wire that's digging in to the trunk already and it's quite heavy, but um, I don't think I would be able to pull. I don't believe I would be able to um, pull that down anymore with a uh, I don't think I'd be able to pull that down anymore with this piece of wire without it springing back up. The wire, the uh, the uh, limb is already harder than the wire. It's like oh, I don't know. Let's do the trick. You know the trick, right? Um, you want to see if the wire is heavy enough to bend the limb. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to pull. I'm trying to see if I can pull the limb down with the wire and instead instead the wire bit so the answer to is the wire heavy enough to bend the limb is no but anyway like i was saying at some point when we've got this vibricated out like we want it to we can put a small wedge cut about you know 90 percent of the way through there just a tiny little wedge cut and then pull that down with a uh, with a guy wire and uh, that would put the shape in that that we're that we're going to want on the lower limbs we're going to want to hang down a little steeper and then less of that as we go up so it might be that at that point somewhere in there the weight of the limbs might be able to help us out but uh, in any case if they look like they're a little too straight up or a little too more a little too upright um, a little wedge cut at the bottom of those 
will be something that we could uh, that we could incorporate. Wonder if you saw that I knocked off a little bud there because I, um, I wasn't using both hands to remove the wire. Curses, Pat. That's okay. We've got we've got more. I think it'll probably forgive us. Uh, this other branch coming right on up. You can see all the little spots are coming out. But, uh, and then as we look right on up, we're going to have lots of choices. And I think as I discussed in uh, an earlier video, uh, I'm always wanting to be conscientious about not having a lot of stuff coming straight out, you know, in your face. This being the front of the tree, we're not, you know, the what they say, you don't want something coming right at you, poking your eye out, as it were. And as the display goes, you know, you're going to want to show off the main part of your trunks and all that. But uh, having cleared everything back last summer, I was kind of going through a little bit of uh, remorse, especially as uh, I cleaned back some of the things over in here. I missed them. And uh, I started giving serious thought, as, and I have another, as I was thinking, I had, uh, at last year I was thinking I had two years to decide whether or not I wanted this to be uh, a formal upright trio of trees, or if I wanted them to be uh, uh, flat tops, uh, American bonsai, so to speak, America. So, uh, having given that up until, and about the time last year that I trimmed back all this stuff on the front, I remember thinking, yeah, you're not going to want all these things coming right at you. And some of these things are actually starting to get large. And as I pruned them back, I just couldn't get over the sense of loss. And so we are going to have something in here or maybe one of these guys that are trying to come out or maybe one of these guys that are trying to come out. We are going to let some more stuff come in in the front. It won't be all intrusive or anything, but we are going to introduce that little forward dimension to this collection. I mean, to this, to the branch branches that we're going to be working with this year. I'm kind of looking forward to, to seeing those come back. I missed them. Uh, there I said it I missed them uh, also I had mentioned earlier we'll get up to this I had mentioned earlier that with all the shoots coming out here the way this side is going pretty much straight up and the way that this side which is the larger side kind of bananas out and comes back in that uh, a couple of years from now that cut all continued to banana out and maybe be and maybe be soulful and beautiful or it might be that uh, in a couple of years, as that swells up, it just comes less noticeable and all of this just incorporates this area and it goes up like my two little, like my two little uh, missiles looking things. So uh, with all of that going, I had said that if I got a shoot over in here, that I would, that this would be the last year that I would make that, that I would go with a preference of right in here over this. Last year, uh, last winter, late in the game, I had two shoots come up. This one, which as you can see, became the new leader, replacing that larger piece that fanned out like this one does. But the shoot that started right there, which would have been this one's match, died. So I chopped it there and took a new leader to start bringing it back. And now that is so far our dominant leader. But behold, right, don't mess with it, Pat. Right where my, uh, under my fingernail stops. That is the latest new shoot right there. This will come out and go this way. I think when that does, we will, if possible, encourage this little shoot to grow alongside. Anything that gets up, gets going too much over here, 
I won't cut it, but I'll trim it back. I'll trim it back. I'm just going to start holding kind of uh, that little ball just going to be a shoot. And if I get my way, I'm going to encourage this summer, this little shoot to win the race. And when that little, if, if that happens, if that little shoot becomes taller than this leader, then uh, I'll cut it back at some point and let that and let that be the new leader, and that will settle that. That will have brought a leader tighter in without going that far out. When uh, a shoot from here expands coming up that way, I think that'll tighten up. That'll tighten up our game somewhat. Uh, also. I'll probably, somewhere late, later in the game, I'll probably do what I believe uh, John Gene Angel's idea was and do a slight hollow feature here and on the back side. And by hollow feature, I'm not going to go a whole hog. I will just probably do a little, do a little chopping coming down into there to make those holes look a little less machined and allow the the rollover to look like it rolled over something natural instead of rolling over uh, a, a, a pretty bitchin' wedge cut. So, yes, I'm looking forward to that stuff coming out. That's another little better look. Jesus, have you seen what it's at King of the Mountain? So, in theory, this guy right here would be our guy, and all the rest of this stuff goes, but I look forward to letting that go. And that's great. That's great. All of these things that this is doing, it's absolutely great. Uh, again, I see this little shoot right here. I was waiting to see if something came out right here. It came out right there. I think that's close enough. I mean, it could still get beat out by somebody in, in what has been deemed the perfect spot, but perfect schmurfic. If I get that as a shoot, uh, I would love to go with that as a new possible leader, and we'd have all summer to make that sold. But I would just let it just let it go, and um, put a little wire in it and let it come right alongside. While at the same time, kind of trimming back these things to slow them down a little, and uh, to keep telling to keep telling the new kid in town to keep putting it to it, so to speak. So yeah, that would be. That would be nice, and that's kind of the idea. These are going to be a trio of uh, formal, formal upright uh, bonsai trees, and um, I think it's going to be a, a. I think it'll will make a a, a nice arrangement of those guys. I don't really look forward to. I really look forward to the next couple of years. I finally had an idea the other day. I'd been wondering, you know, five years from now, you're not going to be um, a million tons stronger. So how on earth are you going to, when it comes time, repot this? And, and especially especially if, uh, if you're by yourself, how would you, how would I repot this if I were by myself? Okay, let's say, let's, let's snap our fingers and have it be four years from now. You're no longer seeing all of that granulated stuff. It's looking kind of like a big old huge adobe brick because all of the fine roots will have broken all of that stuff down many times over. And, uh, we will have seen uh, all of these little skinny sticks on the tops of these huge trunks. We'll all have matching taper and we'll have all been kind of sewn in there. So at that point, I would get in here with a very large knife and I would cut out a block of that tree and then grab this puppy and lift it right out and set it aside. And then I would cut from there, not cutting this tree or this tree, but I would draw a line from there into here and I would cut straight down to the to the inside of where I felt the inside of the pot 
and then cut it around that way and I would pull out this guy so that I would have those two trees in the block half circle of uh, a root ball attached to them with this big square root ball in the center. Now that actually, uh, not only would that transform this job into something Patricia could do, but also the beauty of that idea is those two, uh, those three cypress trees are planted at different heights. In other words, the two outside trees are about three inches uh, down in the soil. They have wider bases than what you know. They're down there farther to uh, get wider bases still. So when the whole thing were to ultimately get transplanted, those two would have gotten, those two would have come up about three or four inches. Um, I suppose I need to think about that too. When uh, I'm letting these guys grow to height, uh, I'll need to be thinking about the fact that uh, whenever I do that transplant, we would be taking more off the bottom of this one and we would be taking more off the bottom of this one so that we could raise them up higher. Whereas that tree, you can already tell by the root base, it's sitting on top of the soil. Those are down there about three or four inches. They get a little bit wider and they do have little knuckles. They don't have that fanning out, but they do have the little young tree knuckles that will at some point, um, become those buttress bases and that's what they're hopefully doing underneath all of that maybe hopefully they're getting a fat and happy a little fat and happy base so that was a little something i had just thought of the other day that would make that will make this not only uh necessary because i already I already knew when push comes to shove that i was going to have to cut the three trees uh apart so that I could address the different heights of them. But that is also the, so, but the, the genius of that is, is that's also the solution to uh, how, uh, how a, a single old person would be able to, uh, would be able to repot something that's gonna weigh more than me by the time I repot this. Um, not if you keep gaining COVID weight. No, quit. I uh, actually uh, have been running around on the sales floor enough to where I have managed to get rid of uh, part of my COVID weight. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That is where we stand so far. And I'm just looking and admiring everybody is... Um, we're truly blessed. This is a uh, this is a south facing balcony. When I was when I was reading about what it is, this guy wants most and what it, this guy thrives in best. It's it's uh, south facing uh, cliffs and overhang. So uh, glad we could accommodate with the construction of this building there, Ponderosa. Uh, the big pine. And I'm probably gonna pull all my wire off these branches now and see whether or not these guys will hold their shapes for me or not. They've, some of them have been digging in for a minute and I already told you guys I wasn't overly concerned with that, but I don't, um, I don't wanna get dug. I, you know, it'll just get harder for me to remove it at some point because of all the new buds that are coming out. And I can still probably get all that stuff off there without hurting anything right now. If I uh, if I use both of my if I use both my hands, and uh, I do it that way. So, what is that? Okay. Little shoots coming out all over the place. Uh, I'll always be rubbing those little things out of the trunk. Anything that wants to come out on our branches. We're loving that energy and we're loving encouraging that energy. So, yeah, we'll do all of that. But anyway, this was our Super Ball Cypress Sunday. And uh, 
I know you're expecting me to say how excited I am over uh, what's going on with these trees, but you know what? I'm genuinely excited about what's going on with these trees, and uh, I look forward to long limbs and lacy, lacy, leafy, cool. You know, the coolest thing in the world, even in the hot days of Texas summers. Cypress trees just were always so, get your finger out of there. Cypress trees were just always so welcoming. And um, it was just nice. They were just always, if it wasn't, if the ground wasn't soft and wet, they were always the greatest little oasis. And that's kind of what I see about these guys. You know, I have to say, I'm really enjoying the part where I brought them off the rail. Whenever I built that as a project, I always saw it as being out there on the rail saying hello world. And then that was going to give them all the light that we could possibly give them. But um, the rail is a tricky deal. The apartment could say get the trees off the rail at any minute. While at the other hand, the way the ceiling does, the, the rail is the one spot that gets light all the time. So they could, in theory, tell me to take the trees down off the one spot that's in the light most of the day. And you can literally sometimes take your hand back and forth and see it fall into shade, depending on time of year. Like in the summer, it will literally, it will, the, the shadow from the eaves above our heads will literally form a seam right here, making this like the prime real estate if you have to have that sun. Um, our trees, our lights. Pretty much, this experiment has worked out wonderful. The other day I was looking up and I saw like little chichis. I don't know if you know what chichis are. That might have just been a Southeast Texas general description for tiny little birds. But they were hanging out, uh, sitting, sitting on the lights that were running full blast. So if that's any indication of uh, of how much heat they put out they don't not enough to bother little tender bird legs so i hope you were really enjoying your sunday i hope it's uh i hope it's nice where you are uh i hope that you've got uh something in your life that you enjoy as much as i enjoy these bonsai trees and um uh, being, being able to be the one who cares for them, I get to. I get to be the person who takes care of these. And I think that's just an awesome, that's an awesome honor. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I appreciate you. And Frida appreciates you. And our next, our next video will be our Tuesday drop. And, um, I will see you all, Frida and I will see you all, one and all, then, oh, one last thing, I got another little pie tin ready there, tonight when we do our little evening stroll, we will probably do another little prop assist for some more um, cherry tree cuttings, um, I often, I joke about that, but I often take, uh, we have a lot of bird of paradise plants here and they're just absolutely enormous here. I thought they were rubber trees. I mean, uh, banana trees at first because they get so big here and the blooms are like, you know, three or four foot long um, with the blooms themselves, like as big as my hand on stalks that are three foot long. So I love cutting those for flower arrangements and. Uh, whenever I've done those, the, the uh, ladies at the apartment have asked me to help them with their arrangements. And so they know that I've got kind of a, a knack or an eye whenever it comes to uh, stuff like that that I wanted to do. So uh, a little while earlier when I also pointed out that the, um, that the coastal redwood lower branches also made for good arrangements and or wreaths during the holidays they were like oh yeah I'll take all you want and i said well i might also try to do some for cuttings and they went yeah i bet that'd be real pretty give us some if you get some so you know i kind of have well not really 
we're not really doing anything we're not supposed to. I love the feeling of doing things that I'm not supposed to, but at the end of the day, I am uh, not quite the Diablo I used to be. But then I guess that's all a part of being happier than I used to be too. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, I really hope that you are enjoying, I really hope that you're enjoying your Sunday. And uh, Frida and I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching.